today we're in Georgetown in Penang. Today we're going to be exploring some of the many different historical cultures here but also we're going to be trying some of the food here because Penang is known as the foodie capital of Malaysia so obviously we have to try some food. We're currently at the Esplanade which is a big field at the edge of the city and they now use it for sports and things. It used to be a military parading ground. It's also surrounded by some of the most impressive colonial buildings here. They've got the town hall and the city hall which are both really massive and impressive but we actually aren't too sure how you can have a town hall and a city hall surely you just have one or the other i don't know but they're both impressive all the same so as you can tell by all of the water surrounding us penang is actually a big island which we didn't realize and georgetown is just like a small city on the island there's actually a lot of stuff to do here which we didn't really know but one of our favorite features that we found out about this place is the flag it's a palm tree basically i don't know how they came up with the design and i don't know what it means maybe it represents palm oil or something which is kind of sad but it's just the coolest flag ever yep. Thank you. next door to the esplanade is the fort cornwallis and it's actually the site where sir francis light who was the founder of penang originally stepped foot Apparently he came here to take possession of the island of Penang from the Sultan at the time. There's quite a lot of history here, unfortunately they built quite an ugly amphitheatre in the middle, but there's some cannons and there's a big lighthouse and lots of other things that you can just wander around the fort, so we're just going to have a look around. When we arrived at our hostel last night, the hostel owner gave us loads of information about what to go and see, where watch walking tours to go on, and loads of other information. And he also gave us this pamphlet, which shows all of the food that Penang is known for and that we should try here. I don't know if we're going to be able to see and eat all of this, because it also recommends all the restaurants and stuff you should go to. But for now, I think we're going to go and try and get something a little bit refreshing, which is called Sendop. Chendol. Chendol. Hello, are you open? Uh, Chendol Ketchang? Yeah. Oh. Okay. We've come to somewhere that was recommended by our hostel on the little paper thing for Chendol. And I think what's in it is shaved ice, palm sugar, some green jelly looking thing, sweet corn, kidney beans, and coconut milk. I think we've given it a good mix-up because judging by everyone's comments when we had hello hello in the Philippines you meant to give these things a good mix and it's actually gone like really really watery like the ice is melting already maybe it's just because it's a really hot day I'm hoping that it tastes better than it looks because it's looking a little bit brown and sludgy right now <laughs> I've got to be honest it does taste better than it looks I don't know what those green things are but they're really sweet and actually, the sweet corn works in this one like, really well, which I'd be quite surprised to hear. I think it's the palm sugar. It has a similar taste to the three-layer tea, actually. That kind of super sweet, but like creamy, milky taste. I think it's probably not our favorite Malaysian dish, but it is nice and refreshing to have on a hot day. Yeah, I think if it wasn't as watery, it actually would be better. I don't know if it's too hot or the ice was already starting to melt or something, but yeah, it is really sweet. I think actually sharing one bowl, the next few places we're going to visit are actually pretty good examples of how culturally diverse the whole area of Penang is. This is St. George's Church and it's the oldest Anglican church in the whole of Southeast Asia. But the city and the whole area here has everything from Buddhist temples, Hindu temples, Chinese meeting halls and Islamic mosques, just to name some of them. So you can really see how much of a melting pot this whole area has become. very confused when we were in there then because there was like a bunch as soon as you go in there's just like a bunch of England flags and I was like why do they have those but obviously this is the St George's Church and those flags are 
to St. represent yeah, St. George, so that's why they have those flags in there. Just to demonstrate what Bob was talking about when we were back at the church, just down the road from the oldest Anchoring church in Southeast Asia is this ancient Chinese temple. And only two minutes from there is the oldest Hindu temple in Georgetown. And then two minutes down the road from there is the oldest mosque in Penang. It's really funny, it seems like all of the oldest religious buildings in Penang are all on this one street. Unfortunately, once again, we've managed to visit a mosque at prayer time, so we can't go in, but we can just wander around the outside. Come to a place called Restaurant Capitan. It's very noisy here, so you have to forgive us. And the smells are unbelievable. We haven't looked at the menu. We think we're gonna get, what is it, Nessi Lamat here? That was what was recommended. It was another one on our list. And I think it's gonna be good. Uh, yes, please. Okay, that's a lot of food. <laughs> So I double checked the leaflet and actually it said we had to have nasi kandar here. I had no idea what I was doing, how to order it or whatever, but I went up to the counter. Eventually I selected some chicken and some mutton and then he piled up a load of vegetables and a load of sauce and a load of other things on here. Looks amazing, but I think I have enough food for like four people. So I have my own full meal in front of me of tandoori chicken with naan. But after Bob came back with all this food, I thought I'd try some. So I'm gonna try the chicken. I think that's in the dark colored sauce. Oh, that's quite spicy. It's actually kind of cold as well. I'd say it's not like most Indian food that we're used to, because right now we are eating in an Indian restaurant in Little India. It definitely has a Malaysian flair to it because it's spicy, but it's not a deep spice. It's quite a hot spice that like sits in your mouth. It's really, really nice though, but I should probably eat my own. So that was delicious. Unfortunately, we didn't really explain how it works, so we're not sure if we did it right, but just went to the counter. It's called Restaurant Capitan, and it's definitely worth going to. We decided we should probably try and work some of that food off though. So we're gonna make, I think it's about a 15 minute walk over to a very famous house here in Penang. So we'll see you there. So as we're walking around the city, I keep seeing these blue signs and they're quite interesting. They have the name of the, so the street, which is the official name, but then they go through all the different names and the different languages and the different meanings for them. So this one is the uh, Masjid, the Mosque Street, basically. But in Malay, it's called the Auctioneer's Junction. In Hokkien, it's called the Big Police Station. And it just tells you a bit of history and they have this all around the city. It's really interesting. So probably the last stop on our tour today is this, the Blue Mansion. So it was built by a millionaire many years ago and it's mainly, to be honest, famous for being blue and inside it's very intricate and very opulent. You can go in a few times a day. There are guided tours. Um, the next one's actually not for a while and it's getting very hot so we're probably not going to wait around for it. One of the things that's really interesting about it is how many TV programs it's been in. It's been in a load of different TV programs on lots of different channels and also quite famously in Crazy Rich Asians which is a film we absolutely love. Just across the road from the Blue Mansion is this house which I think is even more beautiful and could also feature in Crazy Rich Asians probably. <laughs> So 
So this is what £7.50 gets you in Penang. It's fine. We picked up some Apple Fox ciders at 7-Eleven on the way. So we're just gonna sit here, drink our cider and relax in the cool air conditioning and we'll see you later when we go and get some dinner. So for dinner we've come to Chulia Street where they put out loads of stores with delicious food in the evening. We had actually read online that they closed the road but apparently not because there's loads of cars and stuff going by in the background. But we have already spotted loads of food that looks really really good but we're gonna have a wander around and then find what we're gonna eat. two things that we thought we had to have here. One was Chi Chong Fun and one was Cha Cha Chao Kiao. We'll put it on the screen because neither of us can say it. This is the Chung Fun. We're used to like Cha Su Chung Fun that you get at a dim sum place which is like the rice roll filled with Cha Su pork but this is like more like a rice cake that we got in Korea. Really good, and the sauce is like really like soy flavor. There's not like any spice to it really. It's just kind of like a barbecue soy tasting. And we both got a tea tarik to wash down our meal with. This only costs four fifty, and both the drinks only cost three. And our other dish, which is coming, is seven. So in total, that's fourteen, which is less than three pounds for our whole dinner. This is the dish that we can't pronounce. And there was two options. We could either have it with chicken egg or with duck egg. We went for duck egg just to be a little bit extravagant. It looks kind of just like fried noodles. It has corn, I think maybe chicken or pork, and tofu, and bean sprouts, and it's all served on a banana leaf. That is very nice. <laughs> kind of. Sort of like a pad thai, I guess, but without all the kind of salty taste to it. Like the noodles are just rice noodles. There's like a hint of spice that hits you after you've swallowed it. It's a nice dish. I think it would be a good dish if you were someone that wasn't very keen on like curries and stuff and you didn't know what to eat when you're in Malaysia. Something that is kind of funny about this market is that it's just like really crazy and every stand that you go to you almost feel like you're putting them out by asking them to make you the dish. And everyone's just kind of like, yes, okay, go and sit down. <laughs> it's really funny. I think it's just like the mannerisms and they're just not used to it. That food was delicious and it was cheap, so that's a thumbs up from us. We're gonna go back to our hotel now and get some sleep because we've had quite a crazy day running around. Penang all day. I think tomorrow we are probably just going to explore a little bit more Penang, maybe see some of the nature around the area and just enjoy what the rest of the city has to offer. <laughs> <laughs>